Good morning. Welcome to uh, Northern Point Discipleship. My name is Pastor Glendale Winston at uh, uh, 310 Salem, Conway, Arkansas. We welcome you into morning service. I hope you made it through this uh, snow time and and uh, didn't damage your cars and stuff. I hope your house is all right. I hope you have water. I hope everything is going good for you. And I'm praying that it is. And if it don't, if it's not, it will get better for you. Just a storm that we went through. You know, I said about five things going to happen that we're going to see that we haven't seen. Uh, I just believe this is number. I believe this is number two. You know, we had the White House and I, this. Way, what happened in Texas and everything? I believe this is number two. I, I believe it is something because you know God was saying everybody start prophesying twenty one going to be this and better. And I said no, we're going to see five things in America that we had never seen. So I so this here I think what happened in Texas uh, and things I think is something I know we have seen this in the eighties and on back, but I think it's, it's this is one of them. I believe this is one of them. So I'm going to welcome you today. We're going to get into the Word of God. We're going to be coming out of Ezekiel uh, 37 and start at verse 11. He said, Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, then say, Our bones are dry, and our hope is lost. For we are cut off from our poor. Glory be to God. We, we was uh, been talking about Ezekiel. Uh, over in Ezekiel, when God was getting to speak there about telling them uh, that he was going to show up and he was going to bless them. He was, gonna, he was tired because they was being much heathens and he was over them. God, people learning their ways, constantly learning their ways. God just got tired. He said, when I, when, I, when, I, when I got mad at them, even though they were not obeying God, God said, I, I spoke out of jealousy and I just kind of way cursed them, you know. And put my enemies all over them and cut off their blessing. But he began to tell Ezekiel, speak to the mountain. Tell the mountain, start producing again for my people. And that's what I'm speaking about. You know, how that we see things going to happen, like the snow and everything just happened, the storm. Well, how that God still going to tell, speak to the earth and say, bless my people. And so he was beginning to tell Ezekiel, called in, in 37, begin to see bones dried in a, in a valley. No hope. The hope was God left. And he said, he says, can he live? He said, I don't know, Lord, you know. He said, prophesy to the bomb. And Ezekiel will start speaking to him. So today we're going to continue here because God begin to time. It's time for us to come together. Let's be our topic. It's time to come together. When God was getting ready to bring his people together, he began to speak to them because God was getting ready into, um, to bless his people. And I feel like today, I feel like today that churches, church, it's church, it's church black, white, whoever. I feel like we not on one accord. I feel like politics and different views have really messed everything up. And I think it's hatred right in, in, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, uh, church uh, community by not being on one accord. I, that's just the way, that's the way Judah, that's the way Joseph, Ephraim, that's the way he was. The tribes had split it. And they were all God, but they went on one accord with God. And God was getting ready to bring them back on one accord. And I, and, I, and I think the body of Christ around the world needs to be on one accord. We need to be on one accord. What the Bible says and what it is, that's what we get in agreement with. And I think we should be one accord. Did God somebody say something out their mouth that they don't believe in abortion but believe in scrolling earth to tell us even that we want to lead us? We should be more wild than that. We should know if this, this person really mean what he said or he just saying something to treat people and then put all that hatred and then the violence look just like crazy. But you know, we have to pray for our eyes open. Even today, you hear this sermon. You got to start praying right now so you can even hear what God is saying. So today, let's get into this word. We're going to pray. And we're going to get into study God's word. And I'm going to say, God bless you. Bye. Yes. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor in this place. We thank you, Father, because you've gone all by yourself. We thank you how you protect us. You've washed over through the storm and kept us in peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, amen, brothers and sisters, once again. Hey, look, this is Sunday. Look, look, rain supposed to come. Snow is melting away. Temperature's coming up. So things should be better next week. But we're going to pray for our brothers and sisters in, in Texas. Let's not forget them. Let's keep them in prayer. Let's do what we can do. Even in area of Mayflower and different other places, out of water, make sure we see about our people, get water to them, see what we can do to help them. Let's just keep our together, and we try for us to come together on one accord. And here this is what God was saying. The verse where we say, Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord, Behold, O my peoples, I will open your graves 
and I will cause you to come up out of, of the grave and bring you into the land of Israel. He was beginning to talk to his people like death gone out. You know, one thing about it, God wants to prosper. He wants to be blessed. He wants to be happy. happy. So in other words, to be a threat under enemies, it's like death. It's, it's from hope in you because they depress you. They depress the hope out of you. And so, you know, we got we got a lot of things we got to learn. A lot of things we just be eating pizza, you know, just mm, eating pizza. Oh, I love pizza. But pizza comes from Italy, a time of death. When that when the color, when the, when the water was in, in the food, and they would get sick, they would come out with color. And so what they did to survive through that death time, they start making these what we call fried apple pie. But that's the way they originally made pizza. They would put it on dough, and they would fold it up, and they would eat it. And that's where pizza come from. For them, it's like a coronavirus. For them trying to survive through a, a, a pandemic, a, a disease was killing them. And we love pizza. We eat pizza. That's where pizza come from. See, when when God, when a storm come up, God always make a way to some that benefit us. Glory be to God. And so, you know, her, uh, uh, prayer housing. Prayer housing was where that they had had a green zone and, and a red zone. And by the railroad track, the government would give certain people, like call them names, would give them loans and give them houses. And the red zone, they won't give them no loan. They weren't going to let them move over there. But the lady that was qualified back then, her and her husband, well educated, had money, they would get to start prayer housing. Because the government itself was against them. Now, look at today, you live where you want to live, but it wasn't just that easy. So, different things come to us, it's just because God says, when you're depressed, open a grave. Look at President Lincoln. President Lincoln, mama died when he was young. The daddy left to go and get a wife. Left him and his sister alone. They had to run the farm, young. And he finally gets the wife. When your lady comes back, then the lady come back with books. But the daddy didn't want President Lincoln to even study to read. He wasn't even a very good reader because his daddy did not want him to do it. The daddy hired him out to other people in the neighborhood to labor and to do labor. To end it up, he left. He wasn't a very good looking person. Story went on with him. He ended up marrying this rich woman. That and, and ended up, she tried to push him, change his way. She tried to push him. He even went and pushed him in politics and stuff. And he helped all the people to get in position. And thought for sure he won't be the land commission. And guess what? When the man got in place, going to be a president, he didn't have no place for him. He went back home and thought politics was one for him. His wife was depressed. His wife was getting into it. And just, she seemed greater in him pushing him. And he thought it was over. And look, come to be one of the greatest presidents that it is. Trouble time don't mean nothing but a great setup for what God got for you. So let's look at this right here. So when it says in verse 13, For ye know that I am the Lord, and that when I open your grave, Oh, my people, I will bring you up out of your grave. So there are a lot of people walking around in great clothes, feeling like, man, I'm going to make it. It ain't going to never happen. I got this great dream. Things ain't going for me. And I'm depressed. See, that's what God wants. God don't want us to press. God wants to bless his people. God wants to get the money off your back. God wants you to take on his yoke. God has already, he be, down through the years, he always tried to bless, to bless his people and get them in the place they need to be. That's why you that you want out there, you know I'm calling you right now. That you know you got termination greater than you and the big things that stop you from that being great. But you determine that you will not let it stop you. Because look at great peoples that if President Lincoln thought his, his political career was over by having other peoples get in place, and he was determined, but then he thought it was over going back home. But the white lady have no rest. She know that was great, that she know what she wanted to be. She wanted to be a president wife. And she pushed that man. And so, and she groomed him. So you got to look at this in verse 14. It says, and I shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you into your own land. Then shall ye know that I am the Lord, have spoken it, and, and performed it, said the Lord. Now look at great people and great things where things come from. I just said it several times. Now you live in a place in the neighborhoods you couldn't get in, but the government was against you. That's why if you come from the neighborhood, the, the rich state on that side of the railroad track, you're still in the port, government did it. Come to prove if the government was doing that in New York City, doing it all with suburban areas, the government was giving loans but wouldn't give it to you, to your forefathers. 
He said, and the word of the Lord came unto me and said unto me, Moreover, thou son of man, he said, Take ye one of these sticks and write upon it for Judah, for it is the children of Israel, and his companion of being take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, and a stick for Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel and his companion. So everybody in this house, so what God was trying to do, he said, for writing a stick, he was going to bring these sticks together because what happened, the children of Israel were separated. When you're in the press time, one got some better than other, and one got a little bit of this. They started doing wrong. They were okay when it was down, but they, they were just coming at each other. It was just, it was just, it was in poverty, it was scratching to get what it needed to be, and they were just against each other. That's the way the body of Christ is today. I'm, I'm talking white, black, Jews. We got to come together. We got to be on one accord. When you, when one is going through, we all should go through. But when it's funny, when you see it going through, you don't, you don't, you don't see Judah with, with Joseph or Ephraim, which, which come from Joseph. They were divided. They wanted to come together. They weren't sticking together as they was that they was trained. Our poor father trained us to stick together, pray together, stick together. We was trained. So what we said in 17, he said, and join them one to another in a stick that they shall become to be one in thy hand. He said, join them one to, together so they can be one in thy hand. In other words, he said, there ain't going to be no separation. They ain't going to be this. They ain't going to be that. Because God was saying, I'm going to clean them up and I'm going to bless them. I'm going to get my people back where they need to be. They the salt of the earth. They the light of the world. I'm putting them back in their position. And I feel like in this season, if I can stop it for a minute, God is trying to bring the body of Christ together. Some people are going to church. Some people are back in church. Some people's not because out of safety. So there won't be no super virus spreader going to church catching it. But we can catch the word on TV. We can catch the word on Zoom. We can catch the word the way we've been broadcasting. For safety. So look at this right here. And he says, he says right here in verse 18. And when the children of my people shall speak unto thee, say, will thou not show us that what thou mean by these? Say unto them, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will make a stick for Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribe of Israel, his, his fathers, and I will put them, him in every, with every stick of Judah, and will make one stick that they shall be come to be mine. See, they were separated. They're, they're different. They're, they're, they're separated. God keeps them separated. They're separated. They would say one was chosen, the other one. They were separated. We'll get to it. And the stick thou upon, right shall be in thy hand before their eyes. In other words, he said, bring them together one. Tell them enough is enough. I'm finna bring them together. I'm finna stop all this stuff. I'm going to put them together so they'll know that they belong to me. So they won't be on with one another. And I feel like it's a time of everything that's going on in the earth and everything that's going together. I think God wants to bring the body of Christ together. I know he's calling a revival to the body of Christ, a healing to the body of Christ. He's ready to clean us up. We don't deserve it. He's just tired of what's going on. Everything went on just to show us really where we stand. He said, he said in verse 21, and said to them, Thus said the Lord, God, behold, I will take the children of Israel from amongst the heathen, whether they have been gone, and will gather them on, on every side and bring them into their own land. He said, I will make them one nation in the land of on the mountain of Israel, and one king shall be their king to, to, uh, to them all, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. God don't want his children divided. God wants his children on one accord. God wants his children to be said amen to the word of God. We in agreement with you, brother. He don't want us divided. He want us, we so divided. He want us on one accord, believing what God said, what the word says. Making him our king. Making not the pastor. Not the religion, but the word of God. That making him king. He said in verse 23, Neither shall they devour themselves anymore with idolaters or with their the 
things, uh, nor of anything that is transgression, but I will save them out of all the dwelling place wherein they have sinned and will clean them so they may be the peoples, and I will be their God. That's what you do, because some people don't want to be changed. Some people is stuck in a way, they don't want to be changed. They don't want to get their life or they don't want it. They're rather going to go that way. They believe in God. They believe in God to breath lead their body. They believe in God. So some people think, no, they're not willing to change. Sometimes people got to go through stuff. Some people got to get in a play that, you know, they got to cry out to God. Say, okay, God, I will, I will. Sometimes God has to put pressure on them. But it's, it's a lot better when God don't have to put pressure on the ones that he called. That it be an example. That they just walk through and they trust God through every storm. They still trust in God. And always, what the old saying always tell us, hey, keep your hand in his unchanging hand. Don't matter when we went to mom and them and tell them our problem, they were told us to trust him. He's going to bring you out. You know, and it, it's the day that we have to trust God. We have to have no pride up so high that we thank you so much that we cannot come together and serve one another. Should not help. So much, I dare care of myself thinking I got stuff that I can't come together with people. Mm -mm. I may have an issue with let's do integrity or doing business, let's do it right, or let's do this here. But pause me thinking what I got, make a position, it'll never be in the name of Jesus. I pray. That's one of my prayers. Keep me humble. And David said, My servant, to be a king over them. And they all shall have one shepherd, and they shall also walk in my judgment and observe my statutes and do them. Now, you know, a lot of people right there, you know, he's telling David, as I was teaching that, as I was speaking that, someone was telling me, said a lot of people love sermons that, that touches them in opposition to God with somebody else. Is he God trying to bring everybody together? He's trying to deal with John. He's just trying to tell you you need to come together. And you pray to hear this sermon. Because this is the sermon will elevate you to the next level with God. And God said, can he bones live? When you when you when the when the enemy have already stole your dream, when the enemy already said you can't live there, when the enemy already said you can't have that job on your job, the enemy already been enough against you, the press even have the government against you. That's enough to go back and look and see. You don't know how the press you are. You don't know how the press you've been put in. But not for you when God starts trying to bring you together and clean you up and say, if you come together, I'm going to do this thing for you. I'm going to open up doors for you. I'm going to be a blessing to you. And if I was the one who kept you anyway, said the Lord, and we don't want to come together, my God. Verse 25, it said, And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, to my servant therein, your father, will have dwell, and they shall dwell therein, even they that in their children, and their children, children forever, and my servant David shall be their prince forever. And Jesus said, hey, the throne of David lasts forever. To him. Well, God made a promise. Same promise he made when David went and took Goliath. Y'all couldn't take him because David know that Goliath should, should not be running about people. Same ability he gave David to take Goliath down through that very line, the same script, to make him the king and authority and the leader of God's peoples in a mercy and grace. Understand that he's not a perfect man, but he is a God man, chosen. And the enemy may look greater or may look bigger. But David had no fear because he knew if God was for him, who can be against him? So that authority still live with us. The promise still live with us. It's still in us. But he don't want that to be against each other. He want us to come together. That's against the enemy, the heathen, not against us. But we are turning against us and we'll love the heathen, the enemy. Sound like an Esau to me. And don't sound like a Jacob. So we got to understand that, that he said in verse 26, he said, Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be for everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them, in, I, I will, I, and, I will, and I will place them and multiply them, and I will set my 
sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. In other words, church should be there. Understand it's God. Understanding that it is God, it is God that we serve. It is God that we serve. He's our Lord in the midst of us. And we're in agreement to who God is. Glory be to God. He said, my tabernacle also shall be there with them. Yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. God want his people to come together. I feel like everything going on the earth, which and where it's going. Sooner or later, he's going to let us know. He's, we're going to wake up and realize death moving, the coronavirus moving. Look at the storm we just had in the snow. Look at, we got two more going to come fast. He's trying to let us know he is God. He is God. He is God. And the church, we are accountable. We need to wake up. I remember Jonah in the well. He said, you know why all this storm is happening? Because he, he want me to do something. He said, throw me over and it'll quit for y'all. I feel like when the church get thrown over, put in the belly of, of the well and begin to realize and say, God, you God all by yourself and tell the world what we need to tell them, do what we need to do. I think then things will change for us. I believe that's a calling. He's calling to the church. It's time for revival because the earth can't keep on going with the division and hatred. It's too many churches on every corner. It's too many big superstar preachers, black and white, and not saying nothing, but going along. When you don't say nothing, you go along with it and divide our earth. He says, Verse 28. And the heathen shall know that I am Lord. And do sanctify Israel. Then my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forever. What God is trying to do, brothers and sisters, He's trying to bring us together. See, I'm way out there. See, I'm, I'm seeing out. You know, we can say. Oh, I started hearing them in the first year. Oh, 2021 is going to be denied because of God. I know that's not what you're saying. And that's what God told Jeremiah. They were saying, oh, the Babylonians ain't coming. He said, they may say it, but Jeremiah said, wait a minute, Lord. You told me the Babylonians are coming and they're not going to change. But they said it's not going to come. Is I'm hearing wrong? He said, no, that word worked for me. Tell them what's in their mouth. They're going to get destroyed by the very thing what they say. And so I'll begin to hear. I said, God, just know what you're telling me. But 2021, I wasn't going to say that. I said, Lord, I ain't going to say nothing to him. You'll let him go on and watch. But no, he made me come there Sunday to open my mouth. Five things will happen. Three days later, one thing happened. Now, second deal will happen. Got two more deals. Everybody was talking about uh, Esther and all this here. They were saying what they want to say. But they weren't saying what God was going to say. And I understand. Everybody now sees. Everybody now hears. Because the Bible says different gifts for different people. But what God is trying to do. But he let me see. And I'm not saying I'm all that in back to tip. But what, what he put in the little me to see. I've been saying from day one. He tried to bring revival. He tried to bring a change amongst his people. He can't change the world he changes his people. Because we the light, we the salt. Where is taking us somewhere. We are holding key to a lot of things going down. Because why? If you don't believe that, why do you think you can pray and call houses and speak of your kids and call your money, call your clothes, call your help? No, we are the key on the earth. We are God's people. He's called a revival. See, he spoke to our mountains, blessings and everything. Now he's speaking, he's speaking to his people, what God's going to do. He said, look, Judah and Ephraim, y'all cannot be separated. Y'all one, y'all are peoples, y'all my peoples. I'm around the stick. I'm, I'm trying to make y'all one. No, y'all don't want to come together, but I'm trying to make y'all one. Because the enemy trying to divide. We've been divided. We're trying to make you one. One nation under God. That's what they want to pray to lead to. One nation under God. He's trying to make us one nation under God. He's trying to bring us together. He's trying to bring revival to our hearts and to our minds. He's trying to change us. Not just in America, all around the world to believe in the name of Jesus. And liberty just for all. He tried, if you believe it, you've got to believe that. 
And we have to know and open our heart up and realize, God, you know, some of y'all pray, God, what are you trying to tell me? What's going on? What am I here to tell you? Just what's going on? God trying to make a change. He's changed still with us. He's trying to make a change. But we perfect people know. He said he's going to clean us up. He said, I will clean you up, but I need you to come together. We all got a part to do everything. It's all we have a part that we have to do. Faith without works of dead. We all have a part. And he's trying to bring us together. He's trying to bring us together. He's not into making people jealous of another person. Another person got to. No, he passed out gift. We got, oh, teaching that before we came into the season. He's going to pass out gift. Right now, what you should be doing at home, you should be coming up with ideas, making things better. Look at President Lincoln. He went through and through it. No, 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 no. Didn't look like he was doing politics. Come be the greatest president. You got to look and see. Look at Pisa. Pisa was there in, in, in Italy. They were having cholera. People were dying. And that's the only food was was uh, oil, frying. It was frying in food. They began to fry it, make these little pies. It looked, looked like we were called uh, fried apple pie. But they were like Pisa. And they started what Pisa started. And that's the only food they could eat was keeping them and keeping them going at that time. But look now, the whole world, guess what we enjoy? Pizza, my grandson, he loved pizza. Your children love pizza. You love pizza. Everybody loves pizza. But it come from a deaf thing. Look, it looked bad now, but God got something great that the earth can eat from, from the word of God, the light of God. God is going to do something great in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of a rough time, middle, in the middle of a storm. Storm don't, it's keep hitting us. Why? They're going to hit us. Why? Because God trying to get our attention to so say, okay. You God all by yourself. I'm going to put my focus on you and not on man and not on things. Because we need you because we cannot make it without you. So what's God trying to do? I'm getting ready to close. He's trying to bring us together. So I'm prophesying to nations of them. I stepped in it uh, uh, last Sunday. Begin to prophesy to nations. Speak. I'm not your neighborhood prophet. I'm your nation prophet. God is trying to bring us together. He's trying to bring us together. A little platform. I have, but I'm going to use it to the ability, to the best he gives me. It's not matter if somebody got more than me. It don't matter if somebody got less than me. I'm just going to use what God gives me. You got to understand. People that work hard to keep you on your jobs, that promoted people before you, they shouldn't have got it. They want you to live in neighborhoods, they want you to do nothing. Government, in people. But look now. Look what God is doing. God said he is a government. We're not magic government. We're not against the government. We pray for our president. We pray for our politicians. We pray for our people. But most of all, we recognize God is our God. And that we should love. We should come together. God wants to come together. And God trying to do something great with the church. He's trying to bring revival. We bring revival. We're going to bring healing to the nation. And God was telling, telling Ephraim, and he was beginning to tell Judah them. They were separated. He said, look, you, you're acting like he's, I got to clean you up, and now I got to get you back together. And I got to get you back where you need to be at. Because we'll forget, get a little pain, hear the wrong song, we'll go dancing to it. And ain't no wrong dancing. We, we'll start just doing a little crazy justice. Just ease us a little bit more. After a while, you're cussing, you're fighting, you're everything. You'll be back on that side. God is trying to get our attention. Whenever I say, oh, it's okay, it's okay if you can handle it. My first sermon was Roman, was Roman uh, 15 chapter. If you can eat the meat in front of your brother, that's fine. But don't eat it and defend him. So some things you can't do that somebody else can't do. You might can drink a little bit, but other person drink, they're going to get alcoholic. They gonna, after a while, they're going to be hanging off the chandelier and take it to a whole other level of food. So what you do, somebody else may can't do it. So we have to be careful what we do in front. Be real with God. Love him and trust him. And allow him to change us. To get us to where we're going. I know this may not be the sermon you're looking for. And you know what? I don't get no high five or need. But you get it when it's something you stuck in the ditch. And it's getting you out. And you look like you're going to override your enemy. Talking about making you rich. God bless us blessed. You should be coming up with ideas every day. I'm, like, I'm at home coming up with ideas with my business. Two or three businesses I got, it got going on. In my mind, learning how to make things better. That's what I worked on. Because, Lord, this is no way to last forever. I'm getting ready to win it all melts away. I'm ready to hit running on the ground again. 
time change is coming. We'll be back together one day in the church. I'm already, you know, I, I feel the separation, but now I feel the coming back. It's coming back. It ain't going to be that long. We will be back. So I'm already saying, I got to start preparing myself for the congregation coming back. So you always prepare yourself for the storm because storm don't last always if you survive it. You always prepare yourself. You may be down today, but God's going to bring you up. Further, we could never be quit. Is there another politician? When they was over, they went home. Said, no, he, he brought his horse around to, to newspapers and, and doing other things. Because of something the enemy was driving him. If you got that drive, you know what I'm talking about. You've been preparing yourself to the storm. You weren't just sitting at home, blood and eating, picking up weight. You were thinking. You were thinking day and night, how can I be better? How can I do my business better? How can I conquer better? You were looking in the future. You were seeing brightness. God wants you blessed. God wants you healed. God wants you delivered. He wants you prosper. He needs you prosper. Because when God gave his gift to his people, and after a long time he came back, the one that had, had done it, he told him, good and faithful sir. You've been faithful over a few things. I make you rule over a lot. Then the second came. With his two talents. He had gained two more. He said, good and faithful sir. You've been faithful over a few things. I make you rule over a lot. The one that went and hid his talent, that do nothing with it, he in the earth, he called them wicked, slothful. He said, I will take for them that don't have them, give them that do have. They work in my talent, focus, try to get ahead, stay from letting the enemy control them, depress them, knock the breath out of them. When God has blessed us with wisdom, we got to keep our focus. And knowing what God has given us, President Lincoln never give up. Knowing he's going to be one of the greatest, <laughs> greatest, greatest, one of them. Greatest president, he never gave up when I looked against him. But it's something that was in him. And I don't talk to the people who got something in them. Not the foolishness. Oh, you may be wrestling with some things, but just some greatness in you. Because God said, I'm going to come clean you up. It ain't going to always be like this. He getting ready to position you in a great place. He getting ready to bring you out. He getting ready to put you in. He getting ready to bring his people together. He be getting ready to say, you are the one. You are the, David's your king. Still a promise, the covenant I made, I made forever for you. And no weapon that are formed against you, if you're even going to prosper, you know who I'm talking to. You know that destiny in you, great in you, you don't rest. You just always, your mind is calculated going for greatness and to serving him. Because when God came back, you know what he did? He said, came back, use it for his money, for his kingdom. We don't know our purpose is for kingdom. We know our purpose is to advance the kingdom. We know it's not about us. But our purpose, our success. Or survival is advancing the kingdom, getting the kingdom where it needs to go. We know that. God chose the people to know that. It's not about us. It's about the kingdom. Well, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you today, I hope you've heard it, I hope you pray to hear. And if you hear this over, over, pray to listen to hear. Let God speak to your spirit. He's trying to bring us on one. That we not be a fool. That we'll have wisdom. And we'll be careful before we speak. We'll, we'll go back, we'll pray, we'll see, we'll understand our surroundings and our availability. And understand our creator, what he'll put in us. Greater is he in me than the man in the world. And that don't make you boast, that makes you humble. That don't make you proud, that makes you thankful. That makes us more hungry for we should get, that he should get all the glory out of us. Because he commanded the blessing upon us. We just got to have patience with it. But all we look bad and bad, and always some good is going to come out of it. Hey, God bless you. Look here. We always say this right here. Roman 10 and 9. You confess in your mouth, and you believe in your heart that he's the son of God, that he died and raised from the dead. So if you believe that in your heart, hey, look, you are saved. And I wish you confess that out there. Brother and sister, it's time there's so much going on in the earth, we ain't got time to play. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. We don't know what the next storm is around the corner, but there is some more coming. But we know God will take care of his people. But we know that we have to get our eyes ready, our minds set. We want to pray for our brothers and sisters that are going through right now. We want to pray for them. We want to pray for all the deaths, all the families. There's so many deaths that went on. So many. We want to just pray for families. Just pray for them. That all they're going through. Because people is feeling the pain of losing loved ones. 
And it ain't, it ain't, it's going to continue. It's not going to stop. We're going to see more of this. But you know, it's time to pray. Understand the pain of death. Understand it. Understand it well. It is something you live with every day. But you know what? I'm going to say, God bless you, protect you, watch over your heart, your mindset, keep your mind focused, keep discreeting you. You know, can he drop on the, yes, they can live. And he began to prophesy to them. They began to raise them to be a great army. And that's what God trying to do. He raised us up to be a great army. We're saying, no, 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 no. That God peoples, we say, no, 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 no. That God kingdom still stand, is still alive, and it's still strong. And we stick together. Look, let's bow here and pray. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor for this word today. Thank you for keeping us, God. I understand you're trying to bring your, your, your body of Christ together. You want to be in the midst of us. You don't like the vision that's going on. You don't want to call us, clean us, prepare us. And God, get us ready for your will to do whatever you got after all this is over. What we need to do, God, we need to rise up. We need to be a strong, strong uh, uh, in the world. Focus in the world that that light don't go out, that we be just a little bit of light. We need to be a great light that so people will turn back to you and understand who you are. Now, Father, as we are in the bit of a devil, your presence, God, as you command your angels, go be boys and watch over and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Look, brother and sister, look here. I pray that God bless you. Continue. Look here. I pray that your mind is ready. You focus. You got business wisdom. You focus to, to, to get what you need to get. You know what? And look at every door God closed. I had not let him close it. Every door he opened up, walk through it with every availability. I was telling people that in the church for the season to come. I said, every gift God has given me, because I know this season was come. I said, when God opened that door, I'm going every gift that I got out there survival. So I need you to be thinking. I need God giving wisdom. Learn. Don't think about dumb stuff. Learn how to advance yourself to be better people. How to prosper, to bless your children, their children. The Bible says he wants to make a covenant with us, with us, our children, and their children. Come on, look. He'll bless them to the third and fourth generation. Or else he will curse. Look here, I'm speaking blessing over mine. So look here, I'm ready to focus to get with it. And I want everybody around me I come in contact with. Hey, look, I want to spit out some wisdom to them to help them teach them. I didn't play our hands on because everybody have to create some. We don't reinvent the wheel. We just make it a little bit better. So look at God bless you. And the next time I see you, and this is my word, I need you to hear this. Dream big because impossible hell can be possible in the name of Jesus. God bless you.